today's session. I will just put this on recording. So, fine. As you can see on the screen, we have uh, chapter number three to discuss today, inshallah. Fine. Chapter number three is talking about programming constructs. What are the things that we are going to use in C sharp programming that makes our program, the C sharp program? which are called programming constructs for any language, for any language, whether it is C sharp or Java or PHP or Python, any language will have those constructs, its own programming constructs. OK, its own uh, keywords, its own uh, you know, uh, way of using these constructs and all. Fine. So we'll talk about the C sharp programming constructs today that makes the C sharp program. The objectives of this chapter is examine the anatomy of a simple C sharp program, explain C sharp literals, variables, and keywords. Uh, and the first thing, like we try to understand what is this C sharp programming uh, program and how it looks like, what are the different parts of the program we have in a simple program. Then uh, in the second objective is explain C sharp literals, variables, and keywords. This is also very important in any programming language, the literals, the variables, keywords. Uh, the third objective is describe C sharp data types, which is also very important. Any programming language, its data types are very important to define the data in the program then explain the operators and the expressions. With this, you will be able to write a C sharp program for doing simple tasks like, for example, finding the area of a circle, or finding, uh, solving any mathematical equations, right? So <clears throat> straightforward mathematical equations we can solve by uh, after completing uh, this chapter number three. So these are some objectives of this chapter number three. So let's start with the anatomy of a simple C sharp program. On the screen, what you see is a simple program that display a message called my first C sharp app, hello world, and a new line and a read line. So we got to see what are these things. Name space, simple C sharp app. This is the uh, the the project name itself that we are doing. We have seen in the last semester about uh, creating a new project in C sharp. Right? So when we create a new project, the name of the project becomes the name space under which all the programs will work. The program, we have the class program and in this program we have a main method, public static wide main with a string arguments. Now this is static wide main, this is a main method. What you see here is a main method that every program in C sharp must have a one main method and that, that is the start of the execution of the program. The program starts running its execution from the main method. Like in Java, if you have taken Java, Java also has a main method. Okay, so uh, here the same concept, right? This main method takes one argument that is the string array argument that represents the command line argument. Whatever you want to pass to the main method, you can pass through these arguments. But for simple programs, we don't pass arguments to the main method while we execute this program. Moving ahead, we have something called static and wide. Static and wide. Static means that this method, main method, this main method can be accessed and executed without creating any object or an instance of this class. Right. So that's what the static method means. Wide, it means this main method does not.
mm -hmm. return statement that means it does not return any value back after the completing the execution it does not return any value that's what void means this is in this place we can replace with the data types like integer or int or float or double right uh, we see the data types later so it does not it's this static method does not return anything then we have a main that is the start of our application or of our execution of our program and we have the arguments inside this program so the program starts from the main method and inside this main method we write our code that we want to execute or that we want to run in the in this program okay so now let's try with this uh i think i had this visual studio now let's try i'll try to do it from the beginning and with a new project okay So we're going to select the console app that supports C sharp and it's going to give the name of this project M109 session 2. Okay, create the project. So as you can see on the screen, the namespace is used here, M109 and the class program. And we have the main method, right? With the string arguments, we have console.write line that writes a message on the screen. When we run this program, our output is simply hello world on the screen. So as you can see, this is our right, uh, hello world as an output of our program. It's very simple code here just to print a message, hello world, right? In our last lab uh, file, uh, there was a program that asked you to do, uh, uh, that I asked you to do as, as a lab session, uh, to to display the message, your ID number, your name, and so on, just by using right line. Okay, I hope you have done that to understand this. Fine. Is a class under the system, and console has a number of methods that we use here for uh, for different purposes, right? So uh, in the in the lab one activity file, there was a link to for you to to open this console class and find what are the different methods in that console class where you have the write line, re write method, read line, read method, and so on. Right? I hope you have done that. A text string. To the output stream on this screen. Okay, it has another method called write. One is write line. The other method is write. We have method called console dot write. Okay. Welcome to C sharp programming. So. What is the difference between these two methods is that write line method is going to print the text. Whatever we give the text is going it will be printed and will move to the next line. Whereas write method, the sorry, the cursor will move to the next line. Whereas write method will just simply print it and the cursor is stay in the same line. Okay. Now to just to test it, let's say for example, Sorry. If I'm using just simply uh, 
right line, right? And I run this program and I see that after this hello world, there is a line space here. That is the effect of right line. Okay. Now, if I am using just right instead of right line, and we see what is the effect, there is no line. It means the right will just write the message and stay in the same line and it will not turn the cursor to the next line. It will not take the cursor to the next line. All right. So that's the difference between right and right line. That's the difference between right and right. If you want to continue any two messages in the same line, for example, I want to put welcome to C sharp programming and then hello world in the same line. So first line I use right. The second line is right line, right? So now let's see. We have welcome to programming and hello world in the same line because the first is right one. The right does not takes to the new line. OK, so if I replace this right with right line, then we have these messages in two different lines. OK, so I hope you got the difference between right and right line. Right, clear. Right, this is the difference between right and the right line. Fine, I've been using this two slashes to 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 uh, to stop the line to execute to stop this line to execute this is called comments these two slashes is called comments now comments are used to to write the description of the program for example i want to write it here as my first simple program and this text whatever i put in in the comments right will not be executed and it is called single line comment because i this work only for one line the next line will be executed okay so this is called comment so this comments are used to describe the program if something you want to explain about the working of the program in short okay it's not in detail Comments do not write comments in detail. In detail, in the sense, uh, don't write you know, many comments or don't elaborate the comments. Comments are just you know to explain that what is this program is or wherever there is a necessary that we need to uh, put some comment uh, to explain the program or the program constructs or the logics of the program we can add the comments. Otherwise, we don't need to add any comments, right? And it is optional. If you add it, it will help you to read the program. If you don't add it, it's OK. You don't need to add it, and it's OK. It's fine not to add it, OK? So <clears throat> looking back at Sorry, brother. Uh, I have a question about the comments. Yes, please. Uh, there is people said like in the TMA put a lot of comments so so to give you like higher uh, degree or higher score in the TMA and for uh, the resemble. Uh, well, comments are not the purpose of uh, you know to to get the similarity or to avoid the similarity. No. See, whenever you write any program, comments, what is the use of comments is just to explain the program for the programmer. It's for the programmer who read the program. You, when you write any program, for example, you are writing a program to find area of a circle, right? You want to describe this program in one short line. You put at the beginning on top like after the class or before the main method one comment saying that program to find area of circle given the radius right inside this you don't need any explanation to for the programmer because the one who is reading the program is the program is 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 a programmer he understand the program constructs he understand everything it's not for the users who use the program to uh, to to do their job, right? 
comments in the program is for the programmers. For example, let's say that we are working in a uh, in a software company. We are the developers. We are the programmers. One programmer does some job and gives his code to another programmer. The another program tries to read the code so that he can continue the code. The, the second programmer must understand the first programmer code so that he can continue in the same fashion. In this case, the first programmer will describe something, right? Some logics where he has used, some construct where he has used, and what purpose he has used by comments, by using the comments. So in the same way, whenever you are, when you are doing your TMA, right? Or if it is a final take home exam, comments are required there. But in short and just in brief, you don't need to add too many comments. When too many comments are added, this will distract the reader. We don't need too many comments. And if the tutor or the grading person sees that, that there are too many comments, he can detect the grade saying that there are too many comments. We'll distract reading the program. This is not the good way to write the program. At the end, you are learning a programming language. You are learning how to write the programs. So you have to follow the good practice of writing the programs and making use of different kind of things to avoid plagiarism and to avoid this and that. That's an, uh, and I don't think so. That's a good uh, students like uh, will do these kind of things, right? So and I just comments, use it for its purpose. Don't use it for other purposes, right? So this is what uh, I can say for this. Okay. okay. Fine. So we have seen the read line and uh, sorry, write line and write method. Coming to the read method. What does the read method does is that it allows you to enter some information from the input stream, what is generally from the basic input device that is from the keyboard. There are two methods, which is read and read line. Whereas the read line is to receive the information until you press the enter key. All the information is read. So whenever we enter something, the whole line of data will be copied to the variable in a form of in when we say read line. And in a, in a write in a read method, it will capture a single character. The first character, whatever you enter, will be captured. Okay, the single character. So there is a difference. Read line will read the entire line, whereas read will just capture a single character or just read a single character. So when we see that whenever we want to read a line of data, for example, let's say enter your name. When we say enter your name, you are going to enter the name, right? Uh, it's like more than one word. So it will be in line. So we use the read line there to read the complete line. Or let's say we have another option, enter your, uh, let's say, gender. So gender is F or M. Let's say we say give an option of F or M. F for female, M for male. So there you need only one character. So in that case, you don't need to use read line. Although you can use read line, and you can read the character also as a string. But if you just want to read one character, you don't need read line. You just you can use read directly. Just say console.read will read the one character. Will read one character. Now just to understand this, uh, let me try to uh, use this read and read line. I'll uh, simply say console dot write enter your name. You are going to enter that as a string, right? String name equals console dot 
read line. Now this simply read the name and assign to the variable name. So we'll come to that what is a variable, but just to I'm giving you an idea of read line here. Okay. Uh, console dot write line. I'm just going to write that name again. Okay. Or if you want to write, oh, so I just write the name. This we'll see that once we enter the name, the name is printed again by using this write line statement. Okay. So now let's run this one. Now it asks me to enter your name and in the it is in the same line. It is asking me and the cursor is kept in the same line. So I'll say Muhammad Suleiman and the Muhammad Suleiman is printed here, which is the right line, right? That is the right line. Fine. So to read this name, that is one line of data, we use the right line, read line. Okay. And if we want to read a character, for example, I want to read a character called gender. Okay. So I'll say console dot read one character, right? So I don't need the not impression camera into care. Okay. So this reads in a form of integer. So I just uh, will it convert it into a uh, string. Care. Let's say try to convert to care. Okay. And uh, I'll just now print the character gender. Fine. What happened here? Spelling. Now, first of all, I'll just write the name, for example, and now I enter the character M. The M character is printed, as you can see here. Fine. So it is reading one character. Okay. So this is the difference between read line and read. And uh, most of the time, we are going to use the read line, right, for our general uh, programs. In our general programs, we are going to use the read read line function okay so that's about our first simple uh, c sharp program and uh, i explained these uh, constructs static wide main the parameters and the logic of the program within the main method where we use the right line where we use the read and so on okay right right line read read line okay Going ahead, uh, literals, variables, and data types. c -sharp program is a collection of tokens, comments, and white spaces. Tokens are nothing but the, the words what we are going to use are in, the, in the program. Every word is a token. Every word is a token. So tokens can be of five types. It can be keywords given by the C-sharp, identifiers or variables, literals, operators, punctuators. These can be the tokens. Comments, we discuss about comments, what is a comment and the spaces between the words is what is called the white spaces. Okay, so it's a, the program is a collection of tokens, comments and white spaces. If we look back into this program, these are the tokens, static, wide, main, string. These are all tokens, right? And these are the comments, fine. And uh, space between this, these are the white spaces, what we see here, right? So this is what a program is. A program has these things, right? Now these tokens are further of five types, keywords, identifiers, literals, 
operators and punctuators. What are the keywords? These are the words that are defined by the c -sharp program and has a predefined meaning and you cannot use these words for your own purpose. It has to be used for what it is defined. In the sense, uh, we have something called uh, string, right? I use the string to define a string variable. Where is that string? Yeah. So it's a keyword. We cannot use this string word for our own purpose, right? A string has a predefined meaning that is used to, it says string clause and used to re represent any string variable or a string object. And hence, we cannot use this string for our own purpose. A static, like in a pain method, a static void. Static has a predefined meaning. You cannot use for your own purpose, static word. Similarly, uh, we use wide. You cannot use wide for your own purpose. Wide has a meaning, right? Similarly, int for integer variables or integer values. You cannot use for your own purpose. If for get all these are the keywords and keywords has predefined meaning in the programming language and every programming language has keywords like you have studied java you find java has keywords right java keywords you cannot use for your own purpose similarly other programming languages like uh, python or c or any other programming language has the keyword has its own keywords and we cannot use the keywords for our own purpose it has to be used uh, for the purpose of what it is defined. Okay. So these are the keywords. Uh, you know, you don't need to memorize these keywords. Rather, when you do the program in practice, you will come to know about these keywords, right? For now, you don't know what is for. You may not know what is get, what is class, what is const. You may not know about what is const for now, but when you write a program and use a const, you will understand what is a const and why it is used for const. Okay, so a lot of keywords fine, are there here. So we'll use these keywords in our programs. Moving ahead for literals. Literals are any values that are assigned to the variables or as a result of expression in a program the values assigned to a variable okay or the values as a result of any expression which is assigned to a variable is called literals c literals in c sharp we have the literals of different type we have numeric literals that represents numeric values that is the numbers further divided into integer literals and real literals now, what is integer literals? Can anyone give an example of int integer literals? Students, what are the integer literals? Like numbers one or two? Yeah, any number like 0, 1, 2, 100, 200, 1, 5, 3, 5, any numbers, okay? are the integer literals. And what about the real literals? What are the real literals? Yes. Real literals are again the numbers, but these are the decimal numbers or the numbers uh, which is uh, a floating point or real numbers like for example 1.2 right 2.3 these numbers are called real numbers and which are real literals okay similarly we have the boolean literals boolean literals are true or false right character literals we have single character a, B, C, D, which is enclosed in single character uh, or a string which is enclosed in double quotes is a string, right? 
which is a string literal. So C sharp literal is for the divided numerical, Boolean character, numerical we have integer and real literals, Boolean we have is like the value is true false, character we have single character or a string, multiple characters. Okay, so these are different type of literals we have in C-sharp. Now let's see what are these integer literals refer to a sequence of digits. There are two types of integer literals, decimal integer and hexadecimal. To represent hexadecimal, we are going to use the 0x, right? This number will be as an hexadecimal number. You know about the hexadecimal number that is from 0 to 9 and then from A to F, right? These are the hexadecimal numbers. So we can represent the number either being hexadecimal or in decimal. In our programs, we are just going to use these decimal numbers. Okay. Then coming to the real letters, uh, real literals are represented by some fraction part, like for example, 17.548, okay, or 1.5. We can also represent this what type of number it is, whether it is in decimal or float or double or a decimal number. Okay. F means this is a float number, D means it's a double number, M is a decimal number. The difference between them is the size difference. Float is smaller than double, okay? So the difference is size. When, you come to, when it comes to data types, when you study the data types, you will see what is the size of float and what is the size of double. But at the end, if you mention like, for example, 1.5, if I say like double, uh, D is equal to 1.5. So this is a double value which is assigned to the variable D. Okay, so real letters are the decimal numbers or we can say that fractional part numbers. Then coming to the Boolean literals, uh, it's it takes true or false, two values. That's a Boolean value, true or false. Single character literal which is enclosed in a one pair of quotation marks, that is single quotes. Anything, for example, at in single quote is a character. One in single quote is a character. Two in single quote is a character. Type, if I write something like this, one, two, three in single quote, is it a character? Is it a character or not? Students, can you hear me? Hello? Yes, doctor. Yeah. So uh, my question is, is one, two, three in single code, is a character or not? I think character. Yes. Character literal or not? See, it is not a sing single character, right? Anything uh, should be a single character enclosed in a pair of single quotation mark. It is three characters here. One, two, three. These are three different characters. So if I say one, two, three, this is not a character. If I say one, this is a character. Okay, should be a single character. Fine. Okay, that's a single character literals. A string literals, which is enclosed in double quotes. Anything which is enclosed in double quotes, we call it as in string literals. E1 is, is a single character. It is a string literal if it is enclosed in double quotes. Okay. Fine. We also have the backslash characters, which are used for some special purpose. For example, slash A for alert, slash B for backspace slash n for new line slash uh, o for null to represent null if you want to put a backslash we can use this okay for different special purposes we have this is backslash character literals backslash we also call them as an escape sequence characters okay so that's about the literals now moving ahead to variables or identifiers. 
What's a variable? A variable is nothing but a name given to a storage area that our program can manipulate, can store a data, can access a data. What happens when we define any variable and when we use this variable? Okay, for an example, let me see here, uh, say like, enter a, number I'll just say int x is equal to root dot to int thirty two dot console dot Read line. Fine. So I'm entering. Convert into. I'll come to that. I'll come to that. No worries. Console dot. Number is. Now this program is simply asking you a number. So when I enter this number, will display the number is the given number, okay? Whenever we enter this number, this is stored in X, where we display the X, the X value is displayed, right? This X is a variable, X is a variable. It shows you when you can see that here the comment shows local variable int x. X is a variable here. Now, what is this variable? Why we declare this variable? Why we write this variable is that whenever we want to store any data in our program or use any data in our program, okay, we are going to declare some variables and put the data in that variable. And this variable is what is nothing but a name to a, some memory location inside your system where this value, what we enter, is stored. So, for example, in this program, when I run this program, it asks me to enter a number. I enter 25, right? It goes and it prints that number 25, right? What I print, I don't print 25 here, I print X here. So it goes and takes the value of X and print the value of X here, right? Next time, for example, I enter 55, I get 55. Every time I enter the value, I get the same value. That is, I get what is there inside the X, right? So what happens is that in your system, in the memory, right? Let's say this is the memory where the values are stored, okay? When I declare the X int X, X is given to a memory location where you, the values are stored. When I say enter a value, when I enter 25, this 25 is copied here in that area. Whenever you write this X, it gets its value from the memory. Whenever we change anything to X, it will affect this 25. So when I, whenever I see, for example, here, I write the X, then I make the changes to the X. X is equal to X plus 10, right? Again, I write the X after this changing, adding 10. Now I see I enter 25. First it is displayed 25 before adding 10 and then after adding 10 it displays 35. Right here 25 and here 35. So in the memory location 10 is added. When I, when I said x is equal to x plus 10, what is x? x is this memory. So it takes the value what is there inside this memory, add 10 to it and again it will store that to the X. So it will erase this, override this value 25 to 35. 
25 to 35. So this is what is a variable is. A variable is a name given to a storage area or a memory that our program can manipulate, can access, can store the value, okay? Each variable in C sharp has a specific type. That means a variable should be of some type, whether it is an integer variable or double variable or a real variable or a string variable or a character variable or a Boolean variable. Okay, we will see the different data types there in the coming slides. And then the, the type of the variable defines what is the size of the variable. The size of the variable can be one byte, two byte, four bytes, eight bytes, 64 bytes, right? So the type of the variable defines what is the size of the variable. Size of the variable defines what value, what is the range of value the variable can store? What is the range of value the variable can store? Right? Fine. Variable names may consist of alphabets, digits, and underscore subject to the following condition. These are the conditions under which the variables are going to declare. They must not begin with a digit. Variable must not begin with a digit. Uppercase and lowercase are distinct. That means total with small letters or small characters is not same as total or total or this. Because there is a difference in characters. One is in uppercase, here it is in lowercase. This is totally in uppercase. There are, these three are different variables. right? So it means it is a case sensitive. It is case sensitive. It should not be a keyword. You cannot use the keyword as a variable. Keywords what we have seen here. You cannot use any one of these as variable. Okay. Then white space is not allowed. Any space between the uh, two words of a variable is not allowed. And variable names can be of any length. Can be of any length. Right. So these are the five rules that we need to follow when we declare a variable. It can be alphabet. We can use alphabet digit and underscore to declare a variable, but it should not start with a digit. It should start with a character. Uppercase and lowercase character are different. You should not use keywords. There should not be any space between two words in a variable, and variables can be of any length. Now here is an activity or a question here for you. Which of the following is a valid variable and which is not valid? Gulf. This is valid. Why? Because it satisfies all these five requirements. I mean this rule. Okay. Dot net is not a valid because there is a space here between dot and net. There is a space. It means it is invalid because there is a space. 54 Java. It is invalid because it is starting with a digit. And the rule says it must not begin with a digit. So it is an invalid variable. Okay. The string is an invalid. Why? Why the string is invalid? Students, why the string is invalid? Because the S is not capital. It's a keyword. Oh, no, it's keyword. It's keyword yeah. yeah, because it is from the keywords. We have seen these keywords, right? In the keyword, we have a string keyword. We cannot use keywords as a variables. It says variable names, uh, where it should not be keyword. All right? Fine. So we see that how we can declare the variables. We have to follow this. Okay. Whenever you declare a variable, make sure that it has a meaningful name. It has a meaningful name. For example, you are declaring a variable to store a name. So you declare string name. The variable name or the variable itself describe that what it is. Right? That is what the meaningful names. Okay. For example, you declare a variable to read a radius value. So you write the name of the variable as a radius, for example. Right? So whenever you want to declare any variable, try to use the uh, meaningful names. Try to use meaningful names. Don't use names in general. For example, int a, int b, int c. Then what is a, what is b, what is c? 
you need to define okay just for understanding purpose instead of instead of that if you say int number 1 int number 2 int number 3 or number 1 number 2 number 3 then we can say that this is number 1 this is number 2 and this is number 3 something like this okay instead of saying like if we, if you want to read a name or you want to store a name in a variable uh, you say string n now what is n number or a name or a new what n or if you say string x is equal to muhammad now what is x x is a variable what it is what it is stores we don't know okay so if i say string name is equal to muhammad so i can say that this is a name variable most probably it is storing a name right that is the benefit of using the uh, meaningful names in declaring the variables but it is not uh, syntactically or we can say this uh, the it, it does not give you any error if i use int sorry string x is equal to muhammad if i do this it will not give you any error like i did in my program here i said x is equal to read value i said here before that i said a string name is equal to muhammad right so it does not give you any name any missed any error but it is a good choice or it is good practice that we use a meaningful names okay why whenever we declare a variable we declare it with the data type by specifying what type of data this variable will store when i say int a it is means integer a is an integer variable that can store an integer value a integer literal an integer value like 10 20 100 200 any integer value string p so p is a string variable that can store any string any string like muhammad abdullah ahmed any string p can store so this this is what the data type that specifies what type of variable it is so let's say that i want uh, to store radius of a circle a radius of a circle is for example this is a circle and uh, this is the center and this is called the right what do you call radius in arabic what do you call the radius in arabic and this is a circle we have the center of the circle and this is what the half of this Nusfa. what it is nusfa qatar nusfa qatar yes so this is a radius so if i want to declare a radius a variable to store a radius value radius value can be real value 2.3 2.5 1.2 2 like this okay so i have to see what is the data type what is the data type that supports the real values and i use the data type to define the radius to define the radius okay so declaration when we declare a variable like int a or string p it tells the compiler what is the name of the variable is what type of data this variable will store and the place of declaration decide what is the scope of the variable when we can use this variable we can use it after its declaration after we declare a variable we can use the variable so in this sense for example here i am declaring int x here and i am assigning some value i cannot use this x here console dot right line x i cannot write x here it is an error because x is defined here so after from here i can use x this is what the scope of the variable is here i cannot use x because from before this it is not defined it is not declared so i cannot use x here right so the scope of the variable comes from where it is declared okay where it is declared so when we declare a variable we use the data type and we use the name of the variables we can declare variables something like this we can declare more than one variable in one line we can declare like in this fashion float variable double variable float and double is for the real values that is the fractional values int for the 
decimal values and character variables. Okay, we can assign the value to these variables by using something at the time of declaration. For example, int d is equal to three, f is equal to five. We'll initialize d with the value three and f with the value five. Byte z is equal to 22, double pi is equal to 3.145, char x is equal to x in double single quotes. Right. This is assigning a value at the time of declaring the variable. Okay. Or we declare a variable and then we can assign the value. Later we can assign the value. Fine. It's like for example here. I'll say int x is equal to 10. This is at the time of declaration. Okay. If I say int z and later I say that this tz is equal to 20, this is two step. One is declaring a variable, the other is assigning its value. And these two steps are done in one step here, int x is equal to 10. Okay. We can also assign the variables like this. There is a string assignment x is equal to y is equal to z is equal to zero. It means all x, y, z will take the values zero. Okay. Fine. It is a compiler error to make use of local variables before assigning an initial value. If you don't assign a value, you don't use that variable. For example, uh, for x, I have assigned the value 10. For tz, I have not assigned any value. Now, if I want to write these values, or, okay, let's write it. Console dot write line x. It's okay. If I want to write this, console dot write line of tz, it is an error. What is an error? Red line, it says, use of unassigned local variable tz. We are using variable to which we did not assign any value. That's what it means. It is a compiler error to make use of local variables before assigning an initial value. So it's always better that you assign some value to a variable before you use this variable. Either you assign it literally or you assign it by entering from the keyboard. Now here is a simple program where we declare three different type of variables, short variable, int variable, and double variable, and we assign its values, and we try to print those values here, okay? Go through this program from the top to the bottom. What you see in this program is that there are three variables are declared, A, B, C. A is of type short. Short type is also an integer type or we can say that uh, the the integer value which is uh, with size is less than int and int is, int is for the integer type whose size is bigger than short and double is for the real type so we have three type of values a b c then we make an initialization a 10 b 20 and c is a plus b 10 plus 20, which is 30. And then we write this by using parameters. These are the parameters we see here. Zero, it means the zero, the first parameter. One, the second parameter. Two, the third parameter. So A is equal to zero. It means A will take this value. What is the value of A? 10. So 10 will be assigned here. So you see A is equal to 10, comma, b is equal to 1 what is the first 0 1 second parameter b 20 so 20 is assigned here so you see b is equal to 20 comma c is equal to parameter third parameter c c is what a plus b 10 plus 20 30 so 30 is assigned here okay and hence you will see what we write here is that 10 a is equal to 10 b is equal to 20 c is equal to 30 a simple program 
just to dis just to explain uh, how the variables are declared and initialized. Doctor, I have a question in this program. Please. Now, what is the, the need for uh, concert rate line? If we take it uh, up, what is the difference? Because yeah. the line will get us uh, the... Output. Yes. Now, what happens here is that some of the IDEs will not allow you to see this output. It will just print the output and it will turn off the output screen. And we want to stop the screen here and we want to see the output and then we want to close the output screen and we'll return back to our program. In my case, what I'm using the IDE Visual Studio it does not mean it does not make that sense for me. Right when I use this, uh, say int a is equal to 10. I'll simply use this like this. Sorry. A is equal to 10 and int b is equal to 20 and uh, double c is equal to a plus b okay and i'm just writing here console sorry console dot right line a sorry a is equal to the first parameter comma b is equal to the second pair, sorry, the second parameter starts from zero. C is equal to the third parameter. Okay, comma A, comma B, comma A, comma B. Now this is the read line which is used here. Now this will do for me. For my in my IDE, it will do for me that it will print the output and it stay and ask. For me, for I press any key to close this window. This is the output window. Okay. In some IDEs, this message is not shown. What it will show is just simply display the output and it will go off. Right. We want to stop the screen and we want to see the output. Okay. That's why there it is used console.readline. Readline will stop there and until you press any enter key or any other values, anything. Okay, until it reaches to the enter key, the, the screen will be on there. Okay, once you press the enter key, the screen will go off. That's why it is using read line here. But in this IDE, it's not required. So even if I use that console.read line, okay, this does not make sense. It will wait for me to enter some value as you see on the screen, right? And then I enter, it will close the screen. Fine. So that's the reason it is given there. Okay. But with the advanced IDEs, I think it's not required. But still, in some IDEs, if it is not the output, you cannot see the output is just displayed and the screen goes off. We can use this read line. Clear? Okay, the next accepting the values from the keyboard or from the user. We can use this uh, read line to read any value from the keyboard or from the user to the to store in a variable like what we did here. Enter a number, enter a radius, enter your name, right? Now there was a question about what is this convert? Convert is a class that has a number of methods to convert one type of data into another type. Now, why we want to use this convert here? Why this convert is required here? Because whatever we enter here in the read line function, whatever we enter, it is entered in a form of a string, in a form of characters as a string. Okay that number we need to convert back into into the number into integer there we use this convert class convert to int 32 it means convert this value whatever is entered when we enter for example here i ask the user 
let's say int number five and uh, okay, console dot pipeline enter a number. Let's say number is equal to console dot read line. Now we can see that there is an error here. What is this error? A string console dot read line. It means this read line read the next line of characters from the standard input device that is from the keyboard. So it is reading characters and it is giving as a string, not as a number, right? And it says this cannot implicitly convert a string to integer. It will not convert. The compiler will not convert automatically a string to the read line reads the string in a form of a string. Whatever you enter, you enter one, two, three, you enter A, B, C, D, whatever you enter, it is entered in a form of a string. We want to convert that into integer so that we can use that as an integer value. There we use the convert uh, class, convert dot to int. We have convert dot to int 32 of console dot read line. So now what happens is that whatever we enter as a, it will be as a string will be converted into integer and then will be assigned to the number. So now it's okay. We can enter a number and we can display that number. Okay, we can use that number. So that's why we use here convert. Okay. So if you look back into convert, there are a lot of methods in the convert that we can convert what type of two integer, two boolean, two double, two date time, two integer 64. Uh, we also have other like C, two boolean, two byte, two char, two date time, two decimal, two double, integer 16, integer 32. This is 16, it means two bytes, 32, four bytes, 64, eight bytes. Okay, small but sign byte, single string, unsigned integer, unsigned 32 integer, 64. Lot of methods are there that convert one type of value into another type, okay? So convert is a class again, where we have different methods to convert one type of value into another type, okay? Is that clear? Student, is that clear? Yes, clear. Thank you. Constant variables. Any variable that we want to fix its value and we don't want to change the value during the execution of the program, then we can make that variable as constant by using a keyword called const, C-O-N-S-T. So const int rows is equal to 10. The rows value is fixed. During the execution of the program, you cannot change the value of rows. For example, if I make a variable int f is equal to, sorry, const int f or const double pi is equal to 3.14157 fixed pi is fixed now i cannot change the pi value during the execution of the program somewhere here if i say like pi is equal to pi plus two right you see that there is an error it says local constant double pi the left hand side of the assignment must be a variable property or index why because pi is a fixed value and we cannot change its value during the execution of the program later. So if you want to see that, we want to use some values which, and we want to keep that as fixed values and we don't want to change its value during the running of the program, then we can use this const keyword and we can make the variables, any type of variable as constant, okay? Similarly, I can say, for example, uh, const str 
string university is equal to Arab Open University. So university variable is fixed now. I cannot change the name of the university throughout the program, throughout the execution of the program. So you see that whenever you want any variable to be fixed and does not change its value during the execution of the program, we can make them as constants. Fine. So this is the use of the constants. Fine, that's some of the constants. Now, moving ahead from the variables to data types. What are the different data types we have in C sharp? Right, we have uh, value types and reference type. Value types we have predefined types and user defined. Predefined we have int, double, float. Okay, these are all predefined types. Okay, user defined whatever the variables that user defines is something new from its own side that is an user defined variable type, uh, data type. Sorry, reference types they have predefined types and user defined types. In reference type, also the same thing. In reference types, uh, these are used to store the references and not the actual values in the memory. Okay, it also also has a predefined and user defined reference types. Okay. In value types, we have user defined and a predefined. Uh, the predefined we have uh, the primitive types, which are for numeric, boolean, and characters. Okay. Uh, we have the numeric, we have the floating point, integer type, and decimal type. Uh, integer types, signed int and signed int. Signed integers will take the values from negative and to positive values, whereas unsigned integers will take the value from zero to any positive number. Okay, there's a difference between signed type and unsigned type. And floating, it's a real number. Right? And decimal is also a real number. That is any value like 1.5, 2.5, something like that. These are all floating and decimal. Boolean types will take true or false. Either it takes true or false. Character types, any character, like, like we have a char, okay, or a string. Okay. Floating type, we have two data types in floating type. We have float and double. We can use float or double, okay? There is a difference between float and double is the size. Float takes four bytes, whereas double takes eight bytes, okay? Memory in the system. So uh, we always use the float double, okay, we instead of float because it is more safer that it takes some memory, but uh, any value the float will accept. Okay, any real value the float will accept. In numeric type we have a decimal type. Okay, that will store decimal values. Okay, which is of 128 bit. Okay, integers unsigned type we have byte, u short, u int, u long. Unsigned int, unsigned short, unsigned long. The, the unsigned here, it means it takes the value from zero to any positive value. One, two, three, hundred, two hundred, thousand, depends on the size. Byte will be like one byte, the size is one byte, so it means it will take zero to 255, value zero to 255. This is the range of what byte accept. Similarly, short is of two bytes. 
and int is of 4 bytes and long is of 8 bytes okay so their size is different and the range of value they take is different okay integers the signed integers we use this int long short s byte okay the same thing but these value takes from negative values like s byte is 1 byte it takes from minus 120 uh, 127 to plus 128 short takes from uh, 2 byte it's 2 byte it takes a range of value from minus to plus negative to positive integer of 4 bytes long is of 8 bytes again it takes from negative to positive values whereas unsigned takes only from 0 it will not accept any negative values okay so those are about the integer we are going to use in our programs these data types int okay most of the time we use int and we use uh, this double most of the time in our programs double and int to declare the variables and for characters we use char reference type uh, is further divided into user defined and predefined and user defined can be classes arrays interfaces delegates and predefined string type object type right so these are predefined we can use this in our programs so these are the data types some of the data types that we can use in our programs to de declare some different type of data so mostly we are going to use int double char string four data types in our programs okay fine moving ahead operators and expressions what are the different operators that we can use in our programs operators and expressions different operators that we can use in our programs we can use arithmetic operator that is plus minus multiplication division okay uh, modulus operator <clears throat> that is the reminder operator we can use relational operator relational operators are less than greater than less than or equal to greater than or equal to equal to not equal to these are all relational operators we can use logical operators and or not we can use assignment operator that assigns a value which is equals that assign a value from its right hand side to the left hand side for example a is equal to 10 assign 10 to the variable a this is an assignment variable can use conditional operator we have a conditional operator we'll see what is this conditional operator we can use bitwise operator and the special operators we'll see some of these operators let's say for example arithmetic operators we have plus that adds two operands for example if a is 10 b is 20 plus will be adding a value and b value that is 10 plus 20 30 minus subtract a minus b a is 10 b is 20 the result is minus 10 right 10 minus 20 is minus multiplication a multiplies b 10 by 20 is 200 uh, do you have any questions to this so then do you have any question Open your mic, I think. Can you please mute your mic? Sorry. Fine. Similarly, we have division divides B by A, for example, 20 by 10 to reminder operator percentage will return you the reminder reminder after division for example 20 by 10 is it goes two times and what it reminds remaining zero so it will give you zero reminder so then do you have any question we cannot hear you Please mute yourself if you don't have any question.
Okay, we have other special operators plus plus and minus minus. These operators are called increment operator and decrement operator. Plus plus increment a value of the variable by one and minus minus will decrement the value of variable by one. Okay, so let's try to understand this in this program. We have three variables here, int a, int b, int c. a is 21, b is 10. We add this a, b and assign to c. c is equal to a plus b. So what is the value of c? c is 31. a minus b, 21 minus 10, c is 11. a multiplied by b, c is 210. a divided by b, c is how much? 21 by 10, 2. It divides two times. A mod the remainder is one because it divides two times, remaining one. A plus plus 21 plus 1, 22. So it will give you 22. A minus minus 21 minus 120. Right? Fine. So but in plus plus and minus minus, there is something called pre increment and post increment, pre decrement and post decrement. Okay, so we will study that inshallah. What is this pre increment, post increment? Okay, in the coming slides, we will see that very soon, inshallah. Okay, but you got an idea about plus minus multiplication, division, reminder. Fine, uh, this is the output of it. Uh, the next relational operators, which is uh, we use to compare two values and it returns true or false. It returns a Boolean value, whether it is true or not. For example, uh, A is 10, B is 20. If I say A is equal to B, it's not true. Why? Because they are not equal. We have to use double equals here. A not equal to B is true because they are not equal. A is greater than B, not true. A less than B is true because A is 10, B is 20. A greater than or equal to B, not true. A less than or equal to B is true because A is less than. Or equal if it is true. If it is or equal, it, is, it will be true. For example, if A is 20 and B is 20. A is 20 and B is also 20. So in this case, this is true. Why? Because it is greater than or equal. They are equal, right? So if any one is true, it is true and even this is true because they are equal in this case okay so these are the relational operators we also have the logical operators logical and logical or and logical not uh, logical these are of come these are used to combine the uh, boolean expressions for example i have a less than b or b less than c in this case it will check these two statements for example if this is true and this is false the whole statement returns true because the, of the or so it will take any one of this is true is true in the r right in this r so in the it is called or operator it is true if any one or both is true if both are false it is false if this the two expressions are false it will return the value false okay and it's just opposite to or is that if both are true it is true if both are true the and will return true otherwise it returns false and not will just swap the result if we, if the expression is true not will make it false and if the expression is false not will make it true Shorthand assignment operators. We can write a shorthand assignment operators. For example, if I want to write A is equal to A mod B, I can simply write A mod is equal to B. Both are same. Both are similar. If I want to write A is equal to A plus 1, I can simply write A plus equal 1. Okay, these are called shorthand assignment operators. Modulus equal, plus equal, minus equal, multiplication equal, division equal. Okay. These are called shorthand assignment operators. Mm. 
moving ahead to the conditional operator the conditional operator is a pair of operators question mark with a colon this is called a conditional operator how it works it uses the expression to define the result which is based on the value of this expression if this expression is true this expression 2 will be considered if this is false expression 3 will be considered for output okay so first expression was is evaluated if it is true then expression 2 is evaluated and becomes the value of the conditional expression if expression 1 is false then expression 3 is evaluated and becomes the value of the expression for example a is equal to a is a string variable input greater than 0 it is positive if this is true positive is assigned to a if this is false negative is assigned to a or in simple words for example let's say that i want to find whether a number is odd or even okay or uh, whether yeah we can say odd or even number for example i'll say enter a number fine okay and i'll say here entering a number after this i'll take a string here string result is equal to i'll check this number number modulus 2 is equal to 0 what it is it is an even number right rakam zawji i will say it is even okay if not otherwise it is an odd number rakam fardi okay and i'll just write the result console dot right line the number is result so what happens here is when i enter a number it will this is a conditional operator right it will check this expression number mod 2 if it is 0 it will assign e1 to result and if it is false it will assign odd to the result so let us run and see i enter a number for example 25 so number is odd i get number is odd right now let me do it for 42 number is even so what is happening here is that it will check this expression if this is true 42 mod 2 the remainder is zero because it divides 21 times remaining zero so it is true when it is true it will take this even is assigned to the result and when it is false for example 25 25 mod 2 it goes 12 times 24 remaining one so it is false this condition is not zero false so it will take the odd and this assign to the result and the result is printed here okay this is what a conditional operator is right okay now coming to this plus plus and minus minus operator plus plus and minus minus operator which is called a unary operators plus plus this plus plus is called an increment operator increment operator in the sense it will increment the value of the variable by 1 it will add 1 to the variable for example so here i have a number what is the number whatever i enter that is a number console dot right line number is number right so let me just to run this and show what we enter a number 25 number is 25 okay if i use number plus plus it will add 1 to the number it will add 1 to the number now i can print again and see what is the number here number after plus plus
so i enter number 25 the number is 25 number after plus plus is 26 so what happened one is added here okay again i will i will make it twice number plus plus two times so one is added there 26 again plus 1 27 25 now the number is 27 because i made it twice okay but there is one interesting th thing here is that there is something called pre increment and post increment let me define it some value p okay if i say like for example p is equal to number plus plus can you tell me what is the value of p and value of number what is the value of number and value of p number is number and p is how much what is the value of p here yes please can you tell me what is the output here what is the number and what is p initially i enter number let's say that okay uh i will assign the number here instead of entering the number here okay i'll just assign here i will not ask any number here i'll assign number is equal to 10. now tell me what is the number and what is p after here after this statement here in the output number and p initially number is 10 and p is is nothing and we did not assign any value we are assigning here number plus plus b it will be uh, number plus one which is 11. okay and number is uh, 10. 10. fine this is what is called post increment post increment okay now let's understand this post increment is what is that if the plus plus is after the variable number plus plus that is variable then plus plus in post this is called post increment what happens here is that if we assign any we use this post increment in any expression first the number value is taken to the consideration to the p what is number 10 10 is given to p then the increment will happen so p is 10 number is 11 you can see there p is 10 and number is 11 why because it is a post increment what is post increment if the plus plus is after the variable then first the value of that variable is taken for consideration for assignment okay and then the variable is incremented so in this case we get the value p as the value of the number which is 10 and then number is incremented to plus 1 10 plus 1 11 this is called post increment okay so you can see the difference here number is 11 p is 10 but if we use plus plus before the variable this is called pre increment it means first increment the number and then assign the incremented value to p so in this case p and number both will be 11 why because first number is incremented from 10 to 11 and 11 is assigned to p so number is 11 p is 11 which is called pre increment so you can see number is 11 p is 11 this is called pre increment fine so in increment we have this pre increment and post increment and you should be very careful when using this pre increment and post increment clear do you have any doubt it's 
students. Is it clear? Yes, clear. Thank you. Similarly, we also have decrement minus minus. We have pre and post. Now tell me what is the value of P and num if I am decrementing. Decrement minus minus will decrement the value by 1. If it is 10, minus 1. So now what is the value of num and what is the value of P? It will be 9 for number and 9 for P. Great. It will be 9 for number and 9 for P because it is a pre-decrement. First it will decrement the number by 1. So 10 minus 1 is 9 and 9 the decremented value will be assigned to P. So we have 9 and 9. And what if it is post decrement? It is 9 and 10. First the number is assigned to P and then it is decremented. Number is decremented. Fine. That's a decrement operator. So plus minus pre increment post increment pre decrement and post decrement so these are some example of it moving ahead arithmetic expression any expression that uses the arithmetic operators is called as an arithmetic expression and we can write arithmetic expressions in c sharp right for example if you want to write a multiply b minus c we write in this fashion. We write in this fashion A star B minus C. If you want to write this expression M plus N multiply X plus Y, we write in this fashion in C sharp. A divide A B divide C, A multiply B divide C. 3x square, 3 multiply X, X, that is X square, 3x square plus 2 into x, 2x, plus 1. x divided by y plus c. How do we write? x by y, then plus c. This is called what? This is how we write in C sharp, the arithmetic expressions. Arithmetic expressions are written in C sharp in this fashion. Okay, fine. So this is all what we have for you. Uh, in this uh, chapter 3, that is uh, C sharp programming constructs. Okay, now here is the table showing you the operator precedency, which operators comes first and which op operators comes next while they are in an, any arithmetic expressions. Uh, it is from left to right. First, of course, we are going to use the postfix operators like unary operators. Okay and the brackets and minus and greater than, fine. Then we talk about the, the unary operators, then multiplicative, multiplication division modulus, then additive, plus minus, then shifts, then relational, then equality, then logical operators, okay? Finally, it comes to assignment operators. This, is, this table shows you the operator residency, fine. So this is all what we have here for you. The summary of this chapter is that we have studied uh, different uh, components of a C sharp program. We talk about keywords. We talk about uh, literals, numeric, Boolean, and character literals. We talk about variables, how we declare variables, how we initialize the variables, what are the different data types, uh, and what are the operators uh, and arithmetic expressions. So we talk about these in this chapter number three constructs uh, programming construct fine so after this we have the lab session inshallah at four o'clock right after 15 minutes in the lab session inshallah we are going to do some programs okay so there is a lab activity here uh, let me show you this yeah this is lab two activity uh, we have some of the tasks here in the lab too. Fine. We'll try to do this inshallah after uh, after an hour. Uh, sorry, after uh, four o'clock. Okay. Uh, fine. So the lab link is given in the LMS. Fine. You can uh, go back and uh, join from the lab link. Okay. 
Uh, before that, let me just uh, download your attendance here. Fine. 